Hello dear friends, uh, welcome to our channel. Uh, today we are going to discuss about a defibrillator, uh, which is a very known instrument for anesthesiologist, critical care specialist, or in emergency department, or in a cardiology department. Uh, we know we, have, we, are, we are using it in our day-to-day -day life in a different purposes. Uh, in cardiology department, uh, there are some specific purposes. In a anesthesiology, critical care, or emergency department, we are using it for cardiac arrest. And uh, today we... Uh, today, uh, today we are going to uh, discuss you how we set up this uh, machine and how we use it uh, for different purposes. And uh, <coughs> we are seeing that this is a uh, this is a Cardio Life. It is a brand name of this machine is Cardio Life, and it is active IFSC named. So, and uh, we know that there are two types of uh, uh, defibrillator. Uh, one is monophasic and one is biphasic. Uh, the both of them are available in different parts of our medical sector and we know that there is a low requirement of energy uh, in the biphasic uh, defibrillator and we can use it in a, a you can use it in our OT we can use it in our ICU we can use it in our emergency department and uh, there are some important issue what are the indication of this uh, uh, machine there are actually two important uh, important uh, uh, indication for this uh, uh, for this machine using of this machine very simply you can say that uh, we are using it for cardiac arrest patient uh, when the rhythm is shockable and we can use the uh, defibrillator machine as a direct electric cardioversion uh, in a cardiology ward when there is narrow complex or what complex tachycardia uh, for both of these the energy requirement is slightly differ and for both of these, uh, the pattern of using it is slightly different. So we first are going to uh, discuss with how we use it in a cardiac arrest. Uh, when a patient is in cardiac arrest, he has no effective pulse volume or carotid pulse. We started the CPR and uh, under, in the undergoing CPR, when we saw that there is a shockable rhythm, we provide the uh, defibrillator shock and uh, immediately after defibrillator shock we start CPR again and uh, in this case we use the uh, we use the um, uh, energy level of uh, as per manual of the uh, defibrillator company manufacturer company and uh, if it is not unknown in a monophasic uh, defibrillator we use it the highest and in a biphasic we can use it 120 to 200 then uh, we are going to show you how we charge the defibrillator uh, machine and going to and we provide the shock or discharge from the machine uh, and before going to uh, show before going to showing you that how we charge the machine we have to uh, we have to confirm we have to show you how where the defibrillator pedals should be placed the defibrillator pedals should be placed uh, yes, we can see that there is a sternum pedal, there is an apex pedal. Sternum pedal should be placed right of the upper sternum, just below the clavicle, and uh, the apex pedal should be placed just below the nipple in the midclavicular line. And we have to show that we should not touch this pedal to any other thing, and should not touch the pedal, both of the pedal, uh, in the anterior part of the chest. Because when the patient size is small or in a pediatric patient, we cannot provide it uh, with a very uh, wa uh, wide area of this uh, paddle. And in a pediatric patient, we cannot uh, press them, cannot uh, place them in the chest of the of chest of the pediatric patient, because it may cause the touch of the, it may cause the uh, adherence of do both paddles. So this is important. Uh, for the pediatric patient, there is another. There is there may be needed some smaller, uh, uh, smaller paddles. So we are going to show you how we set the energy for a cardiac arrest patient. And uh, yes, we are start start this, and we set this uh, on 150. Then we press the charge button, and we are seeing that the uh, machine charged the paddles. Then we take the both of them and we press the discharge button we are seeing that there is a discharge button please uh, take a close view uh, there is a discharge button and we press the discharge button 
and we are seeing in the motor there the discharge of the uh, energy and this is, this is a very simple thing uh, it need not required it does not require much higher, higher efficiency but what is important to remainder the basics to remainder of the basics that we it should be should not touch with one another and should not touch with the any other thing uh, except the patient and in the case of tachyarrhythmia that is white complex or narrow complex tachyarrhythmia we can use uh, it for direct electric cardioversion it requires some lesser amount of energy which may be 100 to 200 joule and uh, uh, joule and it is uh, about uh, when uh, when we use the patient uh, when we use it in a tachyarrhythmia patient uh, do we use it very routinely no we do not use it routinely when the patient is hemodynamically unstable that may be hypotension or pulmonary edema develops we use it uh, in that situation pulmonary edema or pulmonary embolism develops we use it uh, to revert the tachyarrhythmia to the normal uh, rhythm so <coughs> it is a uh, and we use it uh, to prevent the cardiac arrest for the patient to prevent the hemodynamics deterioration uh, in the, in case of tachyarrhythmia and in a pediatric patient how much energy we require in a pediatric patient we require just 2 joule per kg body weight uh, 2 joule per kg body weight and uh, uh, for a uh, 10 uh, 10 <coughs> kg patient we can use it 20 joule for a 15 kg you can use 30 joules and this is it that we how we use it in pediatric patient but it needs the change of the uh, paddle for the pediatric patient as there is a low uh, reduced surface area in the anterior part of the chest and uh, this almost this is it we can use it for different uh, setup and it is a very easily useful uh, material but uh, in our country, low resource country, uh, it is not available in all the hospitals. It is available in some corporate hospital, uh, in some government hospital, and uh, it should it requires actually low maintenance, but very poor maintenance in our country. So most of the uh, defibrillator is not actively functioning in different government or corporate hospital. But we are using in our setup uh, routinely, and we hope you can use it for your. Uh, in your institution easily and uh, we this may help our videos may help you to use it very easily and this will improve your uh, efficacy in performing a defibrillation or cardioversion and uh, thank you all thank you everyone